Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, I think I really need to bring my Kerbals back home. And that's mainly because we're not really close to the Duna transfer window. If we zoom out and take a look, we still got some time warping to do before we can transfer over to Duna. I've got a contract to uh, take care of building a space station around Ike. And also I need to land a lander on Ike to do some science. So I would like to do those things. But, of course, we have to take care of our colonists, if you will. At least our Kerbonauts in our bases. Uh, well, really just the Pioneer base and the station around Minmus. Now the station around Minmus is not too bad. It's got a lot of supplies. But then the habitability is only for 28 more days. The Pioneer base is even worse. They only want to be here for about 18 more days. I don't know what the difference between Hab and Home is. They seem to have a much uh, longer time for Home, I, but I don't understand what that means. All I know is that when the habit habitability ran out for, uh, for Valentina, she basically went on strike. Another problem is the fact that the fertilizer hasn't really worked out for as long as I would have liked. I only did a little bit of time warping, but the fertilizer is way down. So they're using more than I thought they would. And that's probably because of the efficiency. Uh, we're not very efficient. That might be because of the level of the engineer involved. Or it might be because we don't have much by way of solar power. No notice that the electric charge is all out right now. So maybe either one of those things could be causing a problem. But our supplies are running out, and so I have to take that into consideration. We really need to build a base with a little bit more solar panelry and think about how to do that properly. Um, also, if we bring the crew back, then we're going to have more experienced Kerbals, which will help us down the road, so that's another thing. Um, something else to take into consideration is that I want to test out this Moonliner 1 system which is supposed to bring them back. Now it's got 900 meters per second delta V which may be enough to do the trick. It'll at least get them into orbit but I want to see if we can get them all the way back home with it which may be tricky. So that is a question. It's got a full heat shield, lots of ablator and hopefully the lander legs will tuck in properly but I haven't really tried this out yet. So that is the idea. And after bringing them back home from here and also probably from the space station around Minmus, we can do the Ike missions. In general, I think we should uh, try and create another base. I don't think I want to be tied to a particular base on the moon this time. Uh, we, we, we could uh, do a variety of bases on the moon and Minmus instead of just one. Test different uh, ways to do it out for our future colonization efforts. This was a very simple one that was launchable on a single launch, so that was why it was handy. Okay, grabbed. Yay! Up, up, up. Hmm. These rungs are not so good for climbing, apparently. Um, I don't see that she... Oh, there we go. Board. Phew. I was worried that the rungs didn't reach far enough. Alright, next Kerbal. Ah, we need to move Georgie. Okay, board. Uh, get the home. Oh, Samrina's turned into a, 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 a turned into a tourist. Dang it, that's not good. Do we even have a remote controller on here? I didn't think that Samrina would turn into a tourist. Ah, oh, that sucks. Yeah, I don't know if we have a remote controller on here at all. Why did she turn into a tur tourist? Habitability expired. Man. Okay, I don't know how well this is gonna work. 
Yeah, we don't have SAS because she's a tourist. Electric charge is pretty bad off right now, too. I think we better get going, but this could be a little bit harsh. Can I not retract the ladder? I mean, I know she's not pilot. Does that mean there's no control device on here? There's at least Georgie. He should be able to con control stuff. I don't know. Okay, uh, no SAS. I better F5. It's, uh, so this is a problem. It's a little bit unpredictable whether I can get them to pilot their trip home. I mean, it looks like I can't rely on them to pilot the trip home, which is a big problem. Okay. Well, let me see. No, I can't throttle up even. So I have no control over this vessel. But Georgie is still reading as a... Well, maybe he is a, a tourist as well. And they can't disembark now. Um, need crew. Why not a zero? I hope this... This pod has room for four, okay. So we could send crew to them, but this is really bad. This is not what I was intending for this vessel. Now inside here, they've got no habitability apparently. Well, if I transfer somebody else into it, will, will they have habitability in here or not? I don't know. So, I mean, it's really... I guess we could uh, send an identical ship and have four people come over, two to, well, I don't want to send any more for the base, but I could in theory send two for the base and two to bring these two back home, and then leave that new pod here. But that's really cumbersome. Yeah, I'm not really liking this. At least with, uh, with just attack life support, I know how, how well they're going to get on in whatever vehicle. Just moving them over and then, then deciding that they don't want to pilot it back home is not real handy. Okay, for now I don't think I'm going to ch make any changes to the Moonliner one. I want to see how it does. But I'm going to send Ted Rod Kerman, a new hire, as the pilot. I'm not going to send two, just, just Ted Rod. And then Ted Rod's going to leave this behind on the moon and transfer to the other pod in order to bring them back. And hopefully he can. If he can't, we're going to need to send something that can carry four Kerbals with a remote controller and then bring them all back home. But then again, if we do that, we can't get the tourists out of the pod, right? Um, since we can't get the tourists out of the pod, I don't know what to do. We can't really... Oh, well, we could use Kerbal attachment system to slap a remote controller on it, but it's a little bit awkward at that point. Okay, uh, well, let's see if Ted Rod can handle the whole business. If not, we've got more problems. Now, this launcher was the one with the floats, but it doesn't have any fins, so hopefully the gimbling will work out, but you know how that goes. Okay, Ted Rod Kerman, heading out to bring back two wayward Kerbinauts. I guess we should just not try and bring people back. I guess we should just transfer them from hab to hab. And maybe that'd be all right. I don't know. Anyway, here we go. Ignition and launch. Mm, the roll is not going so well. Okay, uh, forget the roll actually. He's just gonna have to go up sideways. Very steep ascent. Let's try and flatten this out a little bit more. Yeah, I'm sort of bummed out by that uh, unfortunate situation. trying to figure out how I could plan ahead for it, for Kerbals suddenly turning into tourists when getting into another pod, without any warning like that. Uh, 
Okay, stage set. Oh, this is an SRB stage, right. Um, I should have had a reaction wheel at least. Come on. That's alright, we can close stuff to Apoapsis before lighting it. Could be good if we uh, start the SRB stage in a way that we could get a boost on our transfer to the moon. It doesn't look like it's the right timing for that. Uh, is there a way to straight transfer to the moon like this? It takes some time. It takes more time than strictly necessary. You can see moon transfer uh, take two days kind of thing. Nah. At least our apoapsis will be on the correct side. That's something anyway. Okay, here we go with the SRB. Unfortunately, the SRB stage is going to end up in orbit and stay there. Not the best situation. It's getting a little bit hot there, too. Ooh, suddenly started turning. I guess something was causing a wild gimbal? Anyway, off you go. Loud, really loud. That was way louder than I needed it to be. Oh, I need to put more batteries on this thing. It's only got a hundred electric charge. So many flaws in this, this. So many flaws in this design. I need to take into account. Besides the whole Kerbals not wanting to be anything but tourists once they get inside of it. I uh, can't take full advantage of our apoapsis. So we're actually going to be going around like this. Oh, let me check if the landing gear can go down. Can the landing gear go down? I might have to go back to the... Yeah, I think I have to go back to the space center and come back before the landing gear will be correct. I probably should have dumped some of the ablator. I don't think I need that much, but maybe better safe than sorry. Okay, that's good enough. Now let me go back to Space Center and make sure the landing gear is extended. Well, I've got to be very careful about the electric charge thing, huh? Yep, with only a hundred units of charge and the solar panels like this, it's going to be a bit dicey. Okay, now once again we have to make sure we're at an inclination that actually hits the location of the base. And Moonliner 1 there, let's just set that as a target. Uh, as you can see our inclination is not good enough, so let's make an adjustment. We should have more fuel than we did with the other Moonliner, but that's not going to benefit this mission because for this mission we're going to have Tedrod move to the other Moonliner to try and get to orbit, but this will have more fuel left over for the next time we have to use the Moonliner. Oh, did we get the stage back? Um, that... I don't know which probe that is. But uh, this looks like the actual recovery of the first stage with the floats and the uh, skipper engine. Very good. Okay. Okay, that looks good enough. Let's aim for a landing at our base. Oh, darn. Hmm. Turns out the inclination didn't work as well as I would have liked because it sort of moved on from where it was before. Uh, we might have to wait a while or change our inclination. How much would it cost to change our inclination? Talk about like 400 meters per second. 
Then we have to land and then... Well, I guess this one doesn't strictly need to take off again. We just need to deliver him to the surface location. Maybe we should just take advantage of that and abandon this spot on the surface. Yeah, I think I'm up for that kind of plan. This has already taken more time than I wanted. As so many things in KSP happen to do. So you can see the inclination is not changing that much. The longitude of ascending node is what's changing quite a lot. Okay, that looks like a good lineup. Maybe like that a bit. Get rid of that. Okay, time for MechJab landing guidance as usual. Judge something. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is not good. This is not good. Uh... Oh, please survive, Ted Rod. <laughs> Note that, uh, Note that our other two Kerbals, Serena and Georgie, suddenly got back to work. Well, Ted Rod survived despite my bad estimation of the... I, I wasn't really paying attention to the suicide burn countdown, unfortunately, in my attempt to get close to the other Moonliner, which it, we are actually pretty close to the other Moonliner, except for that little skid there. But, uh, well, anyway, at least Ted Rod is safe. Let's EVA him. And get him to the other pod, just in case if uh, if we do something else, maybe the other Kerbals will decide to go off duty again. It seems like Ted Rod has uh, ensured that they're going to continue on duty, but I don't know. Maybe they'll suddenly go off duty once he's in the pod. And maybe he'll turn into a tourist too. That would be horrible. Okay, let me just check on them. Wow, uh, as far as they're concerned, they're good with this being their hab for 221 days here. This is remarkably inconsistent. Maybe, I guess, uh, seeing the crash of the other Moonliner made them think that they're pretty well off? I don't know. But yeah, that's just way inconsistent. I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure there's some logic that uh, I should have read about earlier. Well, good news. Uh, they, they're all on duty. Could have been easier if they had been just on duty earlier. But I guess now we'll try and make orbit. Let me F5 again. Okay, quick saving. Very good. SAS. Yes, we've got SAS. And here we go. Oh, great. Yeah, okay. Now, look at that. Uh, suddenly when I lift off, the two of them don't want to work anymore. It is bad. I guess, I mean, it's the added hab space, but then why wouldn't they, uh, what about counting the Pioneer base then? I mean, the Pioneer base was a good hab and all. Uh-oh. The landing gear does not want to retract. I don't get it. The Pioneer base was in range and everything. Okay, let's see if we can manage a direct transfer to Kerbin. I doubt it. It might be, this might not get be able to get back to Kerbin and we might have to pick them up. It's going to be complicated. That's orbit, but we only have 234 meters per second left. This doesn't have any RCS on it. It wasn't meant to dock with anything. It doesn't have a docking port. Yeah, I mean, on uh, last check for how well we can do, the answer is not so well. I think it'll be easier to get to them and bring them back if they're in orbit around the moon. 
But now I have to design a new vessel for that. And I think this whole Moonliner, Moonliner system is a bust, I think we can say. What we need is something that can go from Kerbin to the moon, and then from moon orbit down to the surface. And then we need a moon station for them to do these things with. Um, maybe the vehicle that's supposed to bring them to the moon and back would also be good enough to bring Kerbals to Duna and back. And have enough supplies and all. That could be handy if it carries enough Kerbals. Let me think about that. Alright everyone, here we have our transfer vehicle for between Kerbin and the Moon, Kerbin and Minmus, Kerbin and Eve probably, and Kerbin and Duna. This is the Queen of Sheba because I've used five Sheba nuclear engines here, just a reminder about the stats on that engine. Um, it's a tiny little nuclear engine, 515 vacuum ISP, but not that much thrust, it's only 10 kilonewtons in vacuum. But it's light, so that's good. Um, the forward portion of this, obviously we have a docking port and we've got a remote controller because maybe our Kerbals are not going to want to pilot this thing. And then we have this cockpit, the M95 Goose, which has a crew capacity of 3, though I was especially interested in the reaction wheel power of 20, uh, because that saves me from putting a reaction wheel on any other part of the launcher. And um, yeah, so it is a powerful cockpit. I don't I was thinking of using this one, which has a crew capacity of 6, but that might be overdoing it and they'll probably be cramped and I really don't understand uh, their satisfaction with the roominess yet, so I uh, better give them more room and I think this will do. Uh, so that is benefit, but just in case that's not enough room, because especially for Duna and Eve, those are long trips, we have an inflatable OKS habitation ring. Yes, now... Now they'll be happy, right? How much does that add, actually? If we take a look right now, uh, it says uh, for three crew, it's 192 days of habitation. If uh, we keep that retracted, it's only 92 days. 92 days is a long time, so this cockpit is pretty good. But uh, by adding this, we add another 100. Uh, if we added another one, we could add another 100, I guess. Let's see. Um, so I don't know if it's linear like that. Yeah, it's it's linear. It says Kerbal months here. So I guess 100 days is 6.25 Kerbal months. Is that right? Anyway, but it's only 1.25 tons. So we could, if it turns out that this isn't enough, we could easily expand this. It's not like too much extra mass to add another habitation ring here. Oh, it isn't linear. Um, that's only 255. Whoops. Oh, wait, it's not expanded. Ah, 355. Ooh, that's more than I thought. I mean, okay, so expanded. Wait, now this is only 30. Oh, retracted. It's, okay. So let me rephrase that. This is 30 all on its own. And then uh, retracted, this has 90, uh, 60 days. I have no idea how they can live on, in it retracted, honestly. I think that's probably wrong. Because when it's retracted, it's not easy to get in and out of. But uh, we'll leave that be for now. Um, but it, it actually adds 162 days, which would sounds a lot more like uh, six and a half months to me. Okay, and so that's that's a lot longer if we add one more of those. But we'll leave that be for now because we're only dealing with the moon. This will, of course, launch uncrewed. It'll be remote controlled. And we have a life support tank. Right now it's only got supplies for the moon, but we could have substantial supplies um, well, that's only 123 days, but, but, you have to remember that the OKS habitation ring has a life support recycler. So, recycler percent is 25%. Um, I, I don't know if that's how much it ends up recycling or how much, um, is wasted. I'm not clear on that. Let me take a look at the Pioneer module. Um... This one says recycler percent, 75 percent, so yeah, it's actually a pretty bad recycling percentage with the OKS habitation ring, 25 percent. I wonder how they stack up, I mean, let's say I had a Pioneer module and two habitation rings. What does 125 percent do? Does it just go with the maximum percentage, which is 75 percent? Uh, it can't be additive, because that wouldn't make any sense at all. So, yeah, I, I maybe they multiply or something. 
Well, no, that wouldn't work right either. Okay, well, uh, that is another mystery to solve, but so 25% means that we can get 25% more than that, basically. So 100 and, call it 150 to 160 days. Might not be enough, even with a full load of supplies, to get to Duna. But this is definitely enough for the moon. Now, in order to get to the moon, it is going to need to transfer to the moon. It is going to need to get into orbit around the moon, rendezvous, and then break orbit, get back, and then make orbit around Kerbin again, because it can't error break. So it's going to need to make a safe orbit. It's got plenty of delta V here for that. Uh, I've got 3,000 meters per second. That should be enough for that entire mission and more. Uh, it also might need to finish orbit around Kerbin itself after the booster runs out. This is a mainsail we're using for the first time. And I just wanted to make a very simple launcher for it rather than anything too complicated. Okay. So I think that's everything. Got a nifty fairing on it. It looks pretty decent, uh, except right at the mainsail bottom because the mainsail has this stock like texture instead. Okay, so Queen of Sheba launch, save, and no pilots. Right, let's go. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, everything looks fine. Ignition and launch. I had ignition and uh, launch clamp separation separately because of the low thrust to weight ratio. This burning a little bit of fuel might actually help us get off the ground in this case. So, nice big fins this time. Hopefully, that's gonna keep us safe, right? Right? I even checked the center lift and center mass. So, there should be no flipping. This is not recoverable because it gets too far into orbit. I would have to put a heat shield on it. Okay, looking good so far. Very stable. Oh wait, there's a wiggle. That's totally just the way Smart ASS controls things, because yeah, that's just it's just its own little wiggle there. Okay, throw down. Whoa, throw down. There we go. Okay, waiting for the heat to subside and then we'll separate the fairings. Okay, separating fairings. Okay, we'll keep the apoapsis under 120 and coast to do this last 103 meters per second, though. We'll have to leave some extra time for the Shiba engines to finish the orbit. Okay, separation, and Shiba ignition. Very good. Got to figure out where the crew hatch is, actually. Since that's the crew hatch. Oh boy, I shouldn't have put the RCS thruster on it then. Yeah, I didn't realize that was the crew hatch. I don't know if they got to be able to get in this properly. We'll have to see. Okay, we are in orbit. Let us deploy the habitation ring. Just for looks. Um, so that's, that's what it looks like. It somehow manages to rotate the habitation ring without uh, everything else spinning. Um, maybe because of the powerful reaction wheels in the goose, but not really. It's because somehow it manages to defy uh, rotational physics, but anyway, let us proceed to the moon and make that rendezvous. I don't think the Shibas have uh, gimbling. I haven't checked that though. So we'll have 2,000 left after this burn basically, and then we'll need about, let's say, 300 to get into orbit around the moon, maybe another 100 to rendezvous. 400 and then another 300 to get back, let's say 700, and then to bring our orbit back down, let's say even a thousand, then we will have enough. Okay, now in lunar SOI, lunar SOI, 
And Moonliner one says target. Oh, interestingly, our descending node is right there. I guess we might as well correct a few things here then. We will uh, bring the orbit in and also correct inclination. Right, so something like that. And then as we get to periapsis, we'll make orbit and somehow there'll be an encounter, I, I assure you. So that is the plan. We are in orbit around the moon, waiting to see an effect on that closest approach distance in the right direction. Oh, I just had a flicker there, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How do we go with this one? I um, mean, it's only a uh, two-hour orbital period. There we have a close approach distance, less than a kilometer, we'll say. It's a bit of elongated orbit. Now, Kerbal is not so sure. That doesn't make me happy. Kerbal will be happier with this. And there it shows a close approach distance of less than a kilometer anyway, so I'll go with Kerbal is more comfortable. I will go with what Kerbal is more comfortable with. There we go. Now hopefully we can transfer the people into this vessel, because we can't dock with it. I don't know. It depends on whether they're going to continue being tourists or not. My working theory is that as we bring this close, they'll be willing to get out and board this. But that's just a theory. Target negative relative velocity. Oh, forgot we don't have that much thrust. Okay, wait, they've returned to duty, and oh boy, I was really close at. <laughs> I almost hit that thing. Ah. So, yeah, they return to... G oh, now they refuse to work. Only if it's within 100 meters, it looks like. So that's the thing. If it's within 100 meters, they'll, uh, they'll respond to it. Okay, they've returned to duty now. Uh, it's a little bit more than 100 meters. Okay, we're uh, slightly floating away. I don't know why SAS has such... Well, maybe it's because of the rotating bit. You know what? Let me stop it from rotating. I don't know. This is just a theory, but... Uh-oh. No, they refuse to work if I don't have that. Wow, that's interesting. If, uh, if I keep the module rotating, they're okay. If I don't, they'll refuse to work. Got it. <laughs> um, I understand completely. Yeah, that's the crew hatch grab. Oh, shoot. We've got this thing going. Okay, I forget if there was a way to solve the whole flying off in the middle of nowhere problem. Grab, board. Okay, maybe as a rule less than 0.5 meters per second would be good. Okay, well Georgie is in so that's one worry. Uh, they can get through the hatch even though there's an RCS port on there. So much trouble to get these Kerbals back, honestly. It's really not worth it. Should just leave them there. I mean, that's what colonization is all about, after all. Maybe we should just let them become tourists. I guess that, that isn't the worst fate for them. Especially if they're on a different world. I mean, they can just be tourists. That never leave. You know, if landing a new vehicle...
close by is enough to get them to work. Maybe that's the thing we should do. Like constantly land new things close by. As long as we keep deploying vehicles to the place, they'll be alright. Even if they never come back. There is a theory for you. Oh, uh, come on. Okay, board. Alright, they're all in. So now we have to transit back to Kerbin, and then another capsule is going to have to bring them back down. But let's do one thing at a time. Ah, the hassles, I tell you. Okay. We need to... You know, I, I'm thinking of abandoning this particular moon base because of its deficiencies. And I think the next one definitely needs to be closer to the equator. Or at least in some location that is a little bit more accessible. 30 degree inclination is just too darned annoying. Always having to fix our inclination when we approach the moon. Now, the good thing is that to refuel this, all we need is 1,782 liquid fuel. And, of course, mop pounds. And supplies. But, but mainly liquid fuel. So it's not too bad as far as refueling it is concerned. Oh, uh, is everyone? Well, they're all active now, I guess because they've got their nice rotating habitat and they, they like that. So, yeah. I still don't understand what the home thing is. I mean, I guess... I guess if they turn into tourists, they can stay there. They, they might do something after that two years, even if they've turned into tourists. Maybe that's how it works. I can't... I guess we can't uh, rely on them being... Just happy being tourists in a place forever, huh? So whichever vehicle we send up to get them should also have fuel to refuel this. Okay, not the best place to correct our inclination and and everything. But we do need to correct our inclination. And bring our periapsis down. Because the vehicle that's gonna, well, I mean, we're not correcting it completely, but the vehicle that's gonna launch from Kerbin is not gonna want us in a weird angle. We do not have to get in the atmosphere. Yeah, and this isn't correcting all of our inclination. You see, it looks pretty flat like this, but we've got that going on, which is not pleasant. That's another problem with the non-equatorial base on the moon. Not a problem that we're going to face with interplanetary things, because those will probably come in at the equator around Earth, so that'll be fine. Or we can make sure that they do. Now, I'm not burning towards Kerbin. I want to take energy out of my orbit on all levels. So it's not just bringing my periapsis down, it's also bringing the apoapsis down. Oh, that's too far though. I was once again thinking of bringing it into the atmosphere, which is not what we're trying to do. We just need about 100 kilometers, we find. How much is it going to cost if I want to correct this 6.4 degrees? Okay, and then so that's got a zero inclination now. And then if at periapsis we wanted to bring our orbit down so it's easier for the target craft to rendezvous with us make a nice tight 100 kilometer orbit or so really want to know how much that's gonna cost 829 so that's not good is it well we don't have to be that precise about this one if we have like uh, even two or three degrees, it's not going to be that bad. Let's say a two degree difference. I mean, really, I could probably, I could definitely launch into a more severe situation than that. Maybe we should just test it, uh, keeping it as is. Though, there's no reason to keep the extra liquid fuel if we're going to create a craft that can fully refuel this. Okay, and then on to our periapsis. 
So after this, I need to bring the guys back home from the Minma station. That'll be a thing. And then we're going to focus on Duna and Ike, and I'm gonna make a slew of different missions, as many as I can really, uh, to deal with uh, Duna and Ike and send as much as we can there. Pro probably focusing on Ike, because that's what we have contracts for. And Ike is just uh, sort of easier to deal with as far as landing things in the same place. It'll be our staging point for Duna, but we haven't really scanned Duna for resources yet. We don't know if uh, Duna has the stuff that we need, so we're gonna have to check that out. Oops, come on. This is interesting. I hadn't seen this uh, USI colony thing before. Body name Moon, geology 124%. Colonization 124%. I have no idea. I have no idea what that means. And obviously anything above 100% uh, sends shivers down my spine, so... Other than that, uh, there's no, no readout for any of this. Okay, the Shebas are out. We're at 244 by 90 is our orbit. We still have the mod propellant should we need it. But uh, we're going to send the other mission up, and the other mission will do all the rendezvous. So let me build that first, and then uh, we'll see what that looks like. Alright, so here we have the Prince of Persia, going with the odd naming convention of the Queen of Sheba. I just thought of Prince of Persia for some reason, and uh, here it is. No, no special reason why this should be Prince of Persia except for the Queen of Sheba thing. Um, so here we have a remote controller docking port, nose cone that will be uh, dropped off uh, before this gets to orbit. Um, this is an interesting thing. I'm using the sky crane here. Uh, see, it is a sky crane in order to make that our orbital maneuvering engines because it automatically has those coming out, and so I don't have to worry about dumping the engines as part of a service module, right? So we can bring the engines back down. That's handy. Uh, we've got some supplies here, we've got solar panel here, we've got mop propellant tank there. We've got the landing struts tucked in like that, though I don't know if they'll work out alright. We'll see. These are RCS blisters, and they're set to Omni with thrust limited to 50%. Uh, we've got also uh, this, uh, uh, if I can reach it, there's the AES RCS block in there. And so that's also going to help out with maneuvering. And we also have additional RCS blisters here because this is actually the liquid tank that is going to refuel the transfer vehicle. Uh, we have the heat shield here, so once the liquid tank is done with its business, it'll uh, be dropped off in the atmosphere and burn up. So we're not going to bring that back down with us, but everything on top here except for a nose cone is coming back down, hopefully safely. But the landing gear is tricky because uh, so far it's been the case that I've had to go back to the Space Center and come back to the vehicle in order to get the landing gear to actually come down. So, yeah, obviously if I'm in the atmosphere and this is supposed to make a landing, that's not going to work out quite right. Now, obviously, uh, the normal procedure would be for this to splash down, but that's there just in case it uh, it is landing on land, the uh, landing struts, I mean. But anyway, the Sky Crane engine should help us to slow down. It's got 0.78 in the atmosphere, uh, thrust weight ratio, but um, that's before we do all the orbital maneuvering and all that. But then again, it says max 1.1. Hold on, let me... Yeah. Well, we could always dump the heat shield. That's 1.29 then. Still, it's a little bit tight. Maybe I should dump more fuel. I don't know if we'll need 590 meters per second. I've got a lot of stuff on here. We'll be transferring the supplies, of course. Hmm. I think the parachute is quite heavy. Yeah, I mean, it's one of these complicated chutes. Maybe if I use a simpler chute, it'll be... It'll be less? You know, instead of one of these inline ones, use just a pair of the real ones. Let's see if that's less. Apply settings. Apply to se I think it weighs even more, actually. Yeah, having two separate ones is more. Oh, well. Okay, well, we'll have this here then. 
And, well, we'll just have to hope that we don't have to use these engines, I suppose. Hmm. Here we have a Poodle engine, and so that will complete orbit for us, and that will be uh, disposable. And then the launcher is a reduced size Ithaca. So the Ithaca is way too powerful, has a lot, has too much delta V for this situation. But uh, I just reduced the size of a lot of the tanks, reduced the diameter a little bit. And now we have a reduced size one, and so hopefully it will be recoverable uh, with uh, Sage Recovery. Okay, so that's all the basic ideas. Let's try and uh, get our Kerbals. Of course, we are not launching this with Kerbals inside. So, no Kerbals inside here. I don't know why it shows up with three engines here, by the way. I've got that engine, the... the what you would call it, Sky Crane. But I don't know what these two are at all. No idea at all. So, that's uh, curiosity for us. All right, here we are, and let's target our, well, our target, uh, Queen of Sheba launch. Okay, and it seems to be behind us. That's good, though it's in this eccentric orbit, so we have to watch out for that. Um, well, let's give it a go. Throw all up. Ignition. trying to reduce the inclination, but I have to make sure I go the right way with that. Oh, one of the engines has a different amount of fuel. How's that? Oh. Okay, that's a problem. Hmm. Modified... Uh, modified uh, launcher. Not so good. Okay. But anyway. Not a problem for us now. Let's just hope that it can uh, be recovered by stage recovery. This is pretty good all around, though, as far as making a rendezvous. We seem to be a bit behind, though. But I won't get this stage fully into orbit, so let's extend those engines. We will extend our solar panels. We will shut off that engine. We will dispose of the nose cone. Oops. Oi. Can we... Uh oh. I thought we could just dispose of the nose cone like this, but it looks like we can't. Shoot. I have made a mistake. I thought I thought we could undock the nose cone. Why is it locked? Uh well, I guess we'll rendezvous without docking, but then we can't transfer this fuel over. That's no good. Wish I had added some pipes, but that would have been just extra. Okay, well let's let's dispense of this tank, I suppose. Weird. And we can activate these engines. And bring us to orbit, please. I mean, I'd really like to dispose of nose cone now, please. Maybe if I... Let me just quickly go to the space center and then come back and see if I can get rid of it. I don't know. I didn't think that that was a realism overhaul only trick. Well, that was a general thing, but maybe maybe I was wrong about that. Um, nope. <clears throat> Retract bumper. Soft lights on. But no indication I can get rid of this nose cone. Okay, making orbit. Well, I guess I made a mistake not having some other separation mechanism here. Uh, but this should not prevent us from bringing the Kerbals down, it just prevents us from transferring the resources, which is a shame. So, let's just proceed as is. Well, there's no point us getting any closer than that if we're not going to dock. 
let us align the the ports okay uh hatches are ah oh, fudge so they could get into through the hatch but it's considered obstructed it's constru considered obstructed in this direction so they can't exit the hatch how about this hatch I mean there's a hatch here uh, by the way this one is locked as well hmm um, wish I could tell them to just, you know, destroy that thing. All parts should have self-destruct mechanisms. Now, this wouldn't be a problem if we could dock the two vessels. Um, is there any way to, like, explode this? Maybe if we crash it really hard into the other vehicle? Yeah, this is a really bad idea. Can you tell I'm getting frustrated here? <laughs> it bumped. They bumped. Um. Okay, um... I don't want the bumper. I, I want it to not bump. Fudge. There's just no way. <laughs> I don't know how fast I'm gonna have to go uh, to destroy the nose cone. Probably pretty fast, huh? And then I can't guarantee I'm not gonna destroy everything else. Nope. Oh, wow. That uh, this serious bumper force on these things. Okay, I, I give up on that. Um. Okay, folks. This has been a sort of fiasco. All right, let me send up one more of these with the... Uh, let me deorbit this thing. We'll take the loss. I'll send up one more of these uh, with a decoupler. Uh, well, what should we call it? Uh, one that decouples from both sides. A separator, stack separator. And uh, the nose cone. And then we'll try this again. We'll try this again. But yeah, this this is going to... Going to deorbit itself. I don't know if stage recovery might be able to recover this. But let us go. We'll dump this tank. Retract the engines. Retract the solar panels. I have no idea if it's going to have stage recovery. Well, maybe I should test it. Okay, this will be the capsule recovery test. Sounds like a plan. Okay, let's see if this can be recovered safely. Yep. See, it's it's useful after all. The uh, landing struts say retracting, so probably I won't get to actually extend the landing struts. Normally we try to land it close to the KSC for maximal benefit, but I was impatient. Mm, things are overheating. It looks like the landing struts I tried to tuck them in so that they'd be protected, but because I know they like to overheat. But doesn't look like I did a good enough job of that. Maybe we should just take off the landing struts since they're not gonna be deployable anyway. Yeah, there they go. Landing struts are sort of overrated, aren't they? You can land on the bottom of the thing just fine. They always explode. And they won't extend anyway. Okay, um... Well, 5.1 meters per second is not bad. Let's turn that off. There we go. We could soften the landing even... Well, maybe not. I don't think there's enough... Uh, possible thrust from the engines to make a difference.
Oh, it looks like we actually took liquid fuel from the other tank instead of using liquid fuel in here. That's a mistake. Anyway, let's recover vessel. Okay, so we recovered that. Um, not many funds, actually. But actually, that was because we were on the opposite side of the planet. Only 14.8% of the value recovered. Let's take a look at the launcher. Okay, that was the liquid tank we expected to lose. Um, this is the poodle stage, that's fine. And uh, this is the main stage that we intend to recover. Yeah, air brakes and everything, five skippers. It looks like that was recovered just fine, so that's good. Well, okay, I think I'm going to start off the next episode with bringing those Kerbals back, because this has been... I haven't had a very good batting average today as far as getting anything done. So, time to wipe the slate clean and start. Uh, next time, hopefully, we'll have a good positive episode with much achievements, starting with bringing those Kerbals back down and getting them their experience points. Alright, so that being the plan, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.